You've probably heard that north-facing roofs are not ideal for solar panels because they don't get much sun. But the truth is, they can actually boost your total annual generation by 50%. If that sounds too good to be true, stay with me and I'll explain why. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll know that solar panels on a south-facing roof will provide you with the most generation. And if you don't have a south-facing roof, you can still get good generation by placing panels on east and west-facing roofs. But you'll have likely been told that placing solar panels on a north-facing roof is no good because it hardly gets any sun. Oh, and I should say that if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, it's of course the opposite. A north-facing roof is best and a south-facing roof is the worst. Now all this was certainly true a few years ago when solar panels were then two or even three times the price of today's panels and with only half the efficiency. If you were brave enough to put panels on a north facing roof back then, you're probably still nowhere near recouping that investment even now. But here's the thing, technology just keeps on improving over time and prices just keep falling. So the cost of an equivalent array today is four to six times less than it was. And this is actually the key today for making the case for north-facing panels. Of course, none of this matters if a north-facing array can't generate much anyway. So we could do with analysing some real-world data. And thankfully, after keeping my eye out over the last year, the other day I found exactly what I was looking for. What got me interested in north-facing solar arrays was a series of videos over the last year from fellow YouTuber Upside Down Fork. For his own installation, in addition to a smaller array on the south-facing roof, he requested a large array on his north-facing roof. UDF then collected detailed real-world generation data over both arrays over the next few months and concluded it was well worth commissioning that north array. You can check out all these videos and also all the data through a link I've put in the description. And UDF's latest video will show you just how good his north array has been performing. That video is being released to his channel members in the next day or so, and then to the general public in a couple of weeks. Now it wasn't lost on me that UDF's North Array had a significant west-facing element, which of course would help in the generation. Not only that, his North Array was significantly larger than his South Array, and that South Array suffers from partial shading during the day. And so before making a video myself on the benefits of a North Array, I wanted to find out a more optimal real-world example, specifically a property with true north-south roof orientations, equal size solar arrays on each of those roofs, no shading issues on either roof, and a full year's worth of generation data. Quite a tall order, I know, but be careful what you wish for, because it might just get granted. And in my case, my wish was answered the other day. This is Sam Featherstone from Oval Renewables. A year ago, he and his team completed a solar installation near Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the UK. What made this project particularly interesting is that the owner requested identical solar arrays on both the near-perfectly oriented south-facing and north-facing roofs, and with no shading concerns. Sam revisited the customer recently and made this second video showing how both arrays performed against each other over the last 12 months. I've put links to both these videos from Oval Renewables in the description and I recommend you watch them to get all the details about the installation and the resulting data over the last year. What was striking from the data was just how well the north facing array performed against the south facing array. The total generation from both arrays over the full year was 7014 kilowatt hours and we can see the contribution of each of the arrays towards that figure. The South Array contributed 4,556 kilowatt hours, and the North Array contributed 2,457 kilowatt hours. If we bring those two values side by side, you can see that the North Array generated an incredible 54% of what the South Array managed. Way more than I would have expected. So why is that? Well, it's all to do with ambient light, especially in the summertime. Direct sunlight on the panels is best, of course, and south, east and west arrays are well positioned to capture it. But even in the absence of direct sunlight, solar panels can still generate power from indirect or ambient light. You'll know this yourself, when the sun goes behind a cloud, the generation will fall, but it won't disappear completely. And on a bright day, the solar panels on a north array will still generate power from all that ambient light. I wanted to see how the relative contribution of the north and south arrays changed throughout the year, 
but I couldn't find that in Sam's video, so I thought I'd model it instead using Solarasma, a utility that I developed myself, and it's very easy to use. To start with, I set the latitude and longitude of the OVO Renewables installation. I captured this by right clicking the approximate location of the property in Google Maps, somewhere near Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK, copying it to the clipboard and then pasting that directly into the utility. Then I entered details of the two solar arrays. The first array has 12 panels, each 375 watts, which totals 4.5 kilowatts peak. That array faces south, so that's 180 degrees, and it has a pitch of 30 degrees. The second array is the same size, but faces north, so that's 0 degrees, and it has the same pitch. I then let Solarasma do the calculations, and if I scroll down to here, I can see the expected total annual generation broken down by month and also by array. Now the model generation is slightly lower than the just over 7000 kilowatt hours the property actually received, so I'll make a slight calibration adjustment so that it roughly matches it. If we look closely at the ratio of the north and south array generation across the months, what struck me was that during the winter months, the north array didn't perform very well at all, maybe at best contributing 10% of the total generation for those months. But in the summer months, the generation from the North Array was getting very close to the generation of the South Array. That really surprised me. But of course, in the UK, even in the summer, the sun doesn't shine all day every day, and so a lot of that generation will be down to ambient sunlight, which of course is directionless. One thing I wanted to check was any difference in performance depending on the roof pitch. And with the utility, I can easily model that by changing the pitch and recomputing the expected generation. Let's first change the pitch from 30 to 40 degrees and see the chart. And then we'll change the pitch to 20 degrees and see how the chart changes. If I place all three charts side by side here, you can see that a lower pitch, at least at this location, will result in a slightly increased annual generation, just under 3% due to the pitch itself and the extra contribution of the North Array at that pitch. And a higher pitch will result in slightly reduced annual generation, but again only around 3%. The other thing I wanted to try was seeing if the relative generation between the two roofs changed at a location further south in the UK. So let's put the roof pitch back to 30 degrees and then change the location to one near Oxford, which is further south. We'll keep all the other settings the same and recompute the generation. OK, let's compare this Oxford chart against the one we had in Newcastle. And straight away, we can see a roughly 9% increase in the total annual generation for Oxford. That's not surprising as we're a few degrees further south. But you can also see that the contribution of the North Array is slightly higher the more south you are. All in all, things are looking good for a North Array then. Now you can try out the Solarasma utility for all sorts of scenarios at your own location simply by signing up to my Patreon here, and I've put a link to that in the description. It's very low cost, and you'll easily get that money back by making informed decisions from the results you get. And even better, you'll be directly supporting the work on this channel, which is very much appreciated. A huge thank you to everyone who's already signed up to my Patreon. So now that we have real and model data to show the effectiveness of a north-facing array, when is the best time for you to get one? If you already have a solar installation, you could always get a quote from your installer to add a north array to that installation. And then with that quotation and the solar asthma utility, you could begin to work out the payback period. I'm not sure though you'll get the kind of return that you'd like, because even though the solar panels are cheap today, the costs of the installation far outweigh that. But, if you've still to get your solar installation, then it's well worth asking your installer what the extra cost would be to add a north-facing array, if it's all installed at the same time. You might be pleasantly surprised, even if extra scaffolding is required. And if you go down this route, I'd always recommend you maximise the number of panels on the north roof, and indeed any roof. I've never met anyone who wished they'd installed less panels, but I've met plenty of people who'd wish they'd installed more. Looking to the future then, solar panel prices will continue to fall and increase in efficiency. I'm expecting the cost of installation to fall as well as the home solar market grows. 
It won't be long then before it makes sense to place solar panels on all your roof space, no matter the orientations. And who knows, in time, solar tiles, like the ones marketed by Tesla a few years back, may well become the default for all new build properties. Every orientation is a good orientation for solar generation now. I hope you found this video useful. I was certainly surprised just how well a north facing array can perform, especially over the summer months. Please like and subscribe. And if you live in the UK, an easy way for you to support my channel is to switch to Octopus Energy using my referral code here. We'll both get £50 for doing so. Thank you and see you soon.